All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to show you how to find the domain in the range of a function. So for instance, let's try to find the domain of the function f of x is square root of x minus one over x squared minus four. Now, what is the domain? It's just the set of values x or the set of inputs for which your function is defined. For instance, let me illustrate. Let's say you plug in for some reason f of zero. So let's say you plug in zero for x and try to evaluate f at it. Then you get square root of zero minus one over zero squared minus four. And that's square root of minus one over minus four, which for our purposes is undefined. Okay. Now, in other words, if you plug this into a calculator, it would give you an uh, error. Okay. And the question is, for which values of x is this actually defined? And the answer is the domain of the function. Now, the question is now, how do you concretely find the domain? You just need to watch out for three things. First of all, for fractions, whenever you see a fraction, So something a over b, you need to make sure the denominator is non-zero. Okay. Second of all, when you see square root of something, so square root of blah, you need to make sure blah is non-negative. Last but not least, whenever you see ln, not in this example, but in general, you need to make sure that the stuff inside the ln is positive. All right, so let's see how we can apply that for this function at hand. So two things. First of all, notice indeed this is a fraction. Right. this over this. So you need to make sure the denominator is non-zero. So in particular, what we want, we want x squared minus four to be non-zero. And that gives you a x squared is not equal to four. And if you take square roots, we get x is not equal to plus or minus two. Second of all, notice there's a square root. So you want the stuff inside the square root to be non-negative. So you want, in this case, x minus one to be non-negative. So it tells you x is greater or equal to one. And now let's just summarize what we found. So we have two things. So let's say this is the number line. This is the real number line. First of all, what I said is we don't want plus or minus two. So let's put a big X mark here at minus two and at two. Okay. And second of all, as I said, we want X to be greater or equal to one. So basically what I'm saying is ignore whatever is before one and let's just focus on whatever is after. So to summarize, what do we have? What's the domain? It's all the values of x greater or equal to 1, except for 2. Okay, so our answer is domain x greater or equal to 1, except x equals 2. But this you can now just summarize if you want an interval notation. That's just the interval uh, 1, comma, 2 but we exclude it and the interval uh, two comma infinity. Okay, again, we exclude the two. And to say this or this, you just put a union sign. So that is the domain of your function. Now, on the other side of the coin is the concept of the range. And the range, all this is, is just the set of all possible outputs of f. So you see, domains, they talk about inputs. Range, they talk about outputs. And in fact, let's try to find 
the range of the function f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 3. Okay. And there are many ways of doing this, but let's, for example, do it graphically. And then I'll also show you an algebraic way of doing this. So again, range is just a set of all possible outputs of f. And for instance, notice minus 1 can never be an output of f because x minus 2 squared plus 3 can never be minus 1 because it's positive. But then the question is, what values are possible? All right, and let's look at this. So how do we graph this? So let's do some math within math. Well, let's start with the parabola, x squared. Now, because of the minus 2, you have less time left, so you shift it to the right. And because of this 3, you shift it up 3 units. And it's probably somewhere here. Okay, so this is your new parabola now. So x minus 2 squared plus 3. All right. And now the question is, what is the range of this? Well, notice, for instance, so this vertex is 2 comma 3. So definitely the value 3 is attained. Because if you plug in x equals 2, you get that the output is 3. But also, if you look at the y values of this parabola, notice that all the values bigger than 3 are also attained. So in fact, the range of all the values of this function is 3 comma infinity. Or you can also write the range. Since we have outputs, let's write it y. So y is greater or equal to 3. Or an interval notation, it's the interval 3 comma infinity. All right, so that was a graphical way. Some people like it, others don't. But let me also show you the algebraic way of doing this. So again, let's start with f of x. It's x minus 2 squared plus 3. And so for the algebraic way, notice that, what do we start with? Notice that x minus 2 squared is greater or equal to 0. Because you see, we want f of x to be greater or equal to something. So we start with this identity, and then um, let's try to build up f from this. So to get from x minus 2 squared to x minus 2 squared, plus 3. Let's just add 3 on both sides. So then x minus 2 squared plus 3. That's greater or equal to 0 plus 3. And that's x minus 2 squared plus 3. It's greater or equal to 3. So what this tells you is that f of x, so y, which is f of x, is greater or equal to 3. And it does not prove that the range is 3 comma infinity, but it at least, you know, suggests that it is. So, in other words, the range is all the value, y values greater or equal to 3, so the range is 3 comma infinity. We don't really have the tools yet to show that the range is really all of it. We need inverse functions for that. All right, so that was the algebraic way. And finally, to end this, so uh, here I said we start with x minus 2 squared is greater or equal to 0. But how do we know what to start with? Well, there are three things to watch out for. So if you see a square, let's say x minus 3 squared, then automatically start with this being non-negative. Squares are non negative, but also for exponential functions, let's say you have 2 to the x, start with this being positive. So if I ask you the range of 2 to the x plus 3, you start with this, you add 3, and you get the range. And last but not least, um, in college algebra, don't worry about it, but if you're taking pre-calculus, we'll learn about trig functions. So for, let's say, uh, sine of x, 
if you see sine of x, you start with this being between minus 1 and 1. And same thing with cosine of x, between minus 1 and 1. So that's also useful things to start with. And again, the goal is to build up your functions. All right, I hope you like this little primer about uh, domain and ranges. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.